Hi, everybody. Welcome, Phil. Welcome, Jim. Today is the day I'm going to be in my car all day. Um, I'm going to get my roots done, but I thought I wanted to make a video. I feel peer pressure from Jane and Martha to not look glamorous, as glamorous as I'm capable of looking, in these videos. So I wanted to make one before I went and got my roots done. And then I have um, auditions. I have a voiceover audition for a bank, and I'm sure they're probably going to want me to be quirky because quirky people don't know what to do with their money. So I'll probably have to be like, hey, help me, bank. What's going on? I don't understand. Money. <laughs> um, and then I have to go uh, see um, my shrink because I forgot I was supposed to go yesterday. And I just went out to lunch with my husband instead. Um, I always want to imbue more meaning into forgetting a shrink appointment than I think there really is. And I blame shrinks for that. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about. Did I say welcome Phil Lamar? I love you, Phil. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was Jane. I was very intrigued by your hamster wheel thing because I feel I have the same thing only I have like more I call it my tapes it's more of like a reel to reel thing that just keeps playing back over and over in my head and it usually kicks in when I'm um, I come home from a party I go to bed at like 11 11 30 because I'm lame and I go to bed early and uh, then I wake up at 2 30 or 3 and I lie awake for several hours with the tapes replaying over and over in my head of things I said at the party. Uh, usually I think I, an, I came off like an asshole. I hurt someone's feelings or I'm a jerk. Um, or sometimes it's just that I'm, I came off as a crazy person. And I actually prefer uh, that I'd be crazy at this point. I want, I'd rather be perceived as crazy than a jerk. Um, and also, Michael, I don't believe you're giving this up. You can't. You started it. You need to come back. Um, and I also wanted to talk to you about the, the introduction thing. Uh, I'm coming from a little bit of a different place because I'm married to a, a quasi-famous person, Andy Richter. So usually when we meet people, nobody's even looking at me. I mean, I've just had to accept that. They're looking at him because he's quasi-famous so they don't remember meeting me so I've kind of had to get over the ego of introducing myself all the time but something recently happened that um, made me rethink that which is I just started saying nice to meet you to people that I've met like and I'm not exaggerating like 15 or 20 times nice to meet you I wouldn't give them the joy or the courtesy of saying nice to see you I think nice to see you is bullshit anyway. I think you should just say nice to meet you. And if you don't remember somebody, just say I don't remember you. I'm sorry. You know, they'll get over it. Um, anyway, you can say nice to meet you, uh, which I decided I was going to say to this. It's actually kind of a famous -y couple, at least in the, our quasi-famous world, that we meet all the time. I've met, oh, over the past 10 years, well, I've met them both 40 times so I saw them at a party and I decided instead of not saying anything which I'd been doing for a while I said nice to meet you and um, do you know what they said to me they said oh we've met you several times before so now like I was the asshole Uh, I'm wearing sunglasses because sunlight makes me cry. All right. See you guys.